Welcome back to your industry recap. A new aircraft order is on the horizon in exciting developments. Meanwhile, a South Korean-based airline wants to grow its overall fleet, and Ryanair, well, the leading budget carrier, is going to make some pretty big changes to its overall operations from next year. And that's where I'd like to begin. Facing significant delivery delays, changes are on the cards. This is an airline that has been hit hard by Boeing's inability to deliver aircraft on time, alongside the certification of remaining MAX variants. Arguably, Ryanair being a full Boeing operator paired with its incredibly vast route network compared to others means it's struggling even more when experiencing these delays that really don't seem to have an end in sight. Furthermore, this is also an airline that hasn't been afraid to be outspoken about the impact of these delays and has expressed frustrations on a public domain about Boeing's inability to meet deadlines that it has laid out. Now, Ryanair is making changes to its network for 2025 per Reuters as it looks to manage the delays and the realization that it won't have the available aircraft it would ideally like in its hands. The strike action at Boeing has decimated really what's left of the plane maker's output rates, which has a considerable knock-on effect for airline customers such as Ryanair. They will face fresh delays in acquiring jets, which frustrates them and adds to the long delays that were already present. Moreover, airlines such as Ryanair lack a clear time frame for their delivery and aircraft certification, which makes forecasting for the future challenging to say the least. Ryanair's CEO also hasn't been afraid to divulge key aircraft delivery metrics in a host of interviews to really paint a greater picture of the airline's challenges. According to the latest estimates, Ryanair believes it'll receive aircraft deliveries in the first two months of 2025. However, these planes that will be delivered across this period were initially meant for delivery before December of 2024. Therefore, these planes will be available, yes, for the summer 2025 season, but are coming later than what was needed. However, the big problem follows this batch of aircraft, with the CEO stating that more aircraft were due in the months such as March, April, May, with 30 aircraft. But now there's uncertainty on when these planes will arrive, and the likelihood is they won't. So the knock-on effect for a company like Ryanair is colossal, as now they need to build a schedule with the assumption that they'll have to cut routes, suspend route launches, and generally drop frequency in other markets to cope and they will, from all of this, face a financial impact. Ryanair is now expecting to cut that and scale down overall expectations. Unfortunately, Ryanair is used to these events, primarily driven by the fact that delays aren't a new problem for them, especially when related to the MAX. Delays have become a more frequently discussed issue across the industry, and now, therefore, channel. It feels like every video we're receiving a new update from a major airline, and the budget European carrier hasn't been able to bypass these, whether it's the most recent strike action and increased oversight to the certification troubles to the max just being grounded period so many years ago. The ramifications though are not just on routes. I've got to add before I move on. Ryanair says that because its forecasting is not eventuating, it's going to be overcrowded, overstaffed, and this is all going to lead to negative cost implications. But hey, on to some positive news, with China Airlines responding to some concerns that it may be facing political pressure regarding a prospective aircraft order. There had been the feeling that the airline's targeting of a multi- billion dollar order could see decision making impacted by political tensions. China Airlines, however, have come out and said this won't be the case. It remains in a favorable position to evaluate the available aircraft. The order does also follow renewal efforts that involved the company purchasing the 787 Dreamliner with the view of these aircraft replacing its fleet of the A330s. But as for this mega wide body purchase, well, it's not the first time 
time we have heard something related to it. In the midway stages of 2023, we were introduced to the prospect of China Airlines committing to a new widebody, and it's said to be targeting two widebody jets from the A350 to the 777X, and they're not the only airline. While no decision has been made yet on the front of China Airlines, Airbus and Boeing have many prospective customers for these aforementioned aircraft, and will be doing their very best to secure the contracts into the future. China Airlines already flies the A350, with the Dash 900 currently in service. However, with the new order, it will look to replace the now older 777-300ERs. So, you may look towards the A350-1000, and this was cited as the optimal variant in the A350 family, and obviously on the 777X side, it would be the 7799. By flying the A350 already, the company is familiar with this type. This could lead to Airbus being the favourite to then simply put forward its A350-1000 to ensure fleet commonality. But China Airlines is going to be doing its due diligence to make sure that whatever direction it heads is the right one for them. Boeing's recent announcement that the 777X will be delayed another year could hinder China Airlines' view on the aircraft, but this new aircraft order that is still in the works isn't necessarily considered urgent, as in it needs to be placed in the next two weeks and deliveries have to start immediately, therefore there'll certainly be a degree of patience exercised. Staying within Asia and moving over to an airline I have not covered here on the channel, so I'd like to extend a massive welcome to them, that is EasterJet. They've reached a landmark fleet total of now 15 aircraft and they're charting a course for future growth. The airline has steadily developed over recent years and is placing a greater reliance on modern fuel efficient aircraft to bring it forward. And scarily, as 2025 already approaches, the Easter Jet fleet is averaging 10 years of age. They solely rely on the 737 family, but the carrier wants to be able to reduce this overall average age. Because while, yes, the 737 MAX is present, it does still fly 737-800s that are part of the NG series. These averaging 12.3 years and have been leased in the last five years or so. If it can continue adding max aircraft, well, then it will look to bring down that overall age. The latest max delivery was for HL8599, arriving in September of this year, previously destined for actually Ukraine International Airlines and Aerolinius Argentinas before being formally deployed to Easter Jet. This aircraft will enter service at the end of this month after relevant inspections and approval arrives, and they believe this jet will fly towards markets such as Taipei. Looking more into the future, while EasterJet wants to increase its fleet to 20 total aircraft by 2027, a bold ambition, but it builds upon a consistent few years of growth. EasterJet only saw its operations resume in 2023 with three aircraft, but since then, many more planes have arrived, and by the end of that year, the fleet had already grown to 10 aircraft, now reaching 15, thanks to lease agreements. You can let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. Thank you so much for your support here on the channel. Take care, be safe, and I'll see you same place, same time tomorrow.